we bring to you the inspired word of God as you listen to the teachings and preachings of a servant of God, Hosanna David, preaching the end time gospel. You are welcome in Jesus' name. We want to look at a very crucial topic this morning. We have been talking about the general team, you are made whole. Now you can soar and reign. You are made whole. And today we are looking at the womb source. How can we be made whole? The womb source. We want to address the womb source. Uh, everybody here has a womb. Both men and women. Is that correct? Eh? <laughs> Yes, women have womb, but men do not have. Woman means a man with a womb, but man is just a man, no womb. The necessity for the new birth. Why do we need to pass through the womb into this world? And why is it necessary that before we can be made whole, we have to pass through another womb again. Pass through another womb again. Whatsoever thing that is shapen with fire has to be corrected with fire. Is that true? If you have your gold and you want to make some corrections on your gold, where do you take it to? Because it came out of where it was refined with fire. And if you want to reshape it, you take it back to the fire again. Then, even our electronic gadgets, if you uh, buy something, it has warranty, some guarantee. If it is faulty, and you can't, it's something that you cannot repair. You see that it will cost you more. You send it back to the producer for the producer to work on it. If possible, remove that engine and put another one for you. So, another question I want us to also look at is that why do we need to pass through another womb again? We have been born. Is there any reason why we must pass through another womb again? This is a question that Nicodemus asked his creator, Jesus. Let's open our Bibles to John chapter 3, from verses 1 to 8. John 3, 1. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Praise the Lord. This teacher of the law came to Jesus by night. And to him, it was a disgrace to come before someone who came from Nazareth, where even a prophet had never come out from. Someone who is unschooled. Someone who never had a former education. Someone who was just an ordinary carpenter. Someone who is just in his early 30s. What, why do I need me a teacher of the law? Why do I need to meet this young man to ask a question. Not even a question of criticizing him, but a question that shows my inadequate knowledge. That shows that I am incompetent. And Jesus asks him, you are a teacher of the Jew? You are a teacher of the law? And you mean you don't even know this Martin? He was avoiding that question. And by the time he came to Jesus, he came by night and not in the morning. He came by night because he didn't want people to see him. If possible, not to even think of having anything to do with Jesus. Because 
the Pharisees, especially the teachers, were against many of the things that Jesus was doing. So he came to Jesus and he asked Jesus. He had a question in his mind, but before he could ask the question, he made a kind of, he cooked praises. He cooked it very well and presented it to Jesus. Ah, Jesus, no man can do this work except that man comes from God. If God is not with that man, that man can never do this mighty work that you are doing. What was he doing? He was confessing. His faith, his, he did faith. He faith, he faith to confess in the daytime. He went to Jesus secretly and he was confessing that faith to Jesus. But Jesus, this passage used to be one of the passages that confused me in life. I said, how can somebody be telling Jesus that the Lord is with you except you can't do this work? And then Jesus will make a U-turn immediately and said, verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. He cannot see it. Why? The man never mentioned the kingdom of God. He just, in fact, Jesus did not even allow him to land first. The man had an intention. It wasn't the confession of his faith alone that brought him to Jesus. There were some other things. But Jesus looked into the mind of this man, saw where he was going, and then shortened the discussion. But there is something the man said. He said, except God be with him. Except God be with him. This statement took Nicodemus far away from God. This statement that he confessed took Nicodemus far away from the reality that Jesus brought to man. And Jesus said, look, it's not about because God is with me. But this God is not even far from you. You can have this God and be made whole. All these things I am doing, you have come to confess before me. You can do them. In a conversation, there should be a link between the person that is making the statement and the person that is responding. If you ask a simple question of how are you, and the person is saying 20 naira, is there any link? There is no link. The link be between what the man told Jesus, Nicodemus, and the reply Jesus gave to him is that it's not just because God is with me, that is why I'm doing all this work. Even this God is with all of us. I came to bring the God you lost. I came to bring him down to you. And I am telling you today that if you can be born again, you will do this mighty work that I am doing. Even greater work shall you do in my name. Praise the Lord. Do we have people in this place who are telling Jesus today, Jesus no man can do this work except God is with him. Jesus said, you can become like me because I have come to become like you so that you can become like me. Paul said, I have become all manner of things so that I may save some. To the Jews, I become a Jew. To the Gentiles, I become a Gentile. Though without, not without the law. So the Greek have become a Greek. He became all manner of things so that he could save some. So for Jesus to save man, God became man. That man may become God. Am I confusing somebody? I am, I believe I am not going I am not overstretching this scripture. I am not overstretching theology in order to drive in my points. 
when God created man, let's look at who is even man. What happened to man? Why must we be made whole? Why must Jesus come to die for us? These are questions that if we don't understand these questions, these elementary questions, we will have challenge, enough challenges with the whole of our Christian life. Praise the Lord. Verse 3. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born again when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. Praise the Lord. Let's add verse 8, verses 8 and uh, 7 and 8. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listed, and thou hearest the sounds thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. There was a challenge in Genesis chapter 3. Even in Genesis chapter 1, there was a decision to be made. When God was creating, there was nothing like having a formal meeting. Before, maybe, and definitely, God had a plan in his mind. This is what I want to make. I want to create a world. I want to create a paradise. It shall be called earth. This was a plan of God. And God decided to even create a garden and beautify it very well. But after God created all these things, another mind came into God's heart. Let's create someone like ourselves. After our own likeness and there was a meeting between God the Son, God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Ghost. They came together. Okay, how are we going to make man? Let us make man in our own image after our own likeness and let him have, let him have dominion over everything that we have made. God is a tripartite being. God is Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. And the person that was to represent God himself on earth, that man is a tripartite being. Man the body, man the spirit, man the soul. If anybody tells you there is no Trinity, ask the person, do you have a body? Say yes. Do you have spirit? Say, uh, yes, I guess spirit. Do you have soul? Say, yes, I have soul. Are you three persons? No. That is how God is. Praise the Lord. God is three in one. The man that God created in his own image, after his own likeness, is also three in one. For man to have the dominion, God had to give man something that he has for himself. And that is the will. The will, W-I-L-L. Will. You don't tell God, sit down. And then he will sit down. There is no remote control you can use to control man around, uh, God around. Nobody can control God. He does whatsoever he wants to do. So, because God had said, let us make man in our own image, after our own likeness, God said, I am going to give him this priority, this privilege that makes me to have my own reasoning, that makes me a rational being. I can make decisions. I can choose between right and wrong. 
Let me also give man this ability. So that in, in the course of exercising his authority and dominion on earth, he can decide what to do and what not to do. You cannot make somebody a ruler and still use remote control to control the person. Is it possible? Thank God for our AT president. The person, Chief Justice of Nigeria, that they refused to send his name because the man is now dead. Even after the expiration of three months, he had to send his name. I am the one in charge. It doesn't matter the phone calls he must have received from abroad. He said, I am the one in charge. Praise the Lord. Today, he has been confirmed. So when God gave man that dominion, he also gave man the ability to make decisions so that man could choose where to put the sheep pen, where to put lions, where to extend the garden to either to the east or to the north, to the south, to the west. God gave man all these abilities. Psalm 8, verses 4 and 5. The psalmist asked a question here. He said, what is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and has crowned him with glory and honor. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands, that thou hast put all things under his feet. Under his feet. When God created heaven and made earth, the Bible says, Heaven is your throne, and earth is your what? Is your footstool. Let me give a little explanation on this. Where you have your throne, just the way we have cathedral. Cathedral means where you have the seat of the bishop. That is where you have your dominion. The dominion of God is over the whole of heaven. And then, where God has his first two, it has to do with the extension of that dominion. The throne of God is not on earth. The Bible did not say, earth is your throne. No. Heaven is your throne. And the earth is your what? The extension. Why do I say it is the extension of God's dominion? Because that, this earth had been handed over to man. Nothing happens on earth until man gives his consent. If man does not agree with anything on earth, it will not happen. The Bible says, whatsoever thing you bind on earth shall be what? That means because I have given you authority, when you bind it on earth, me, God, I will stamp it in heaven. Because you are in charge. You are the God man. I want us to understand our position and what actually happened to us and why Jesus had to come and say, you have to be born again because something has gone wrong with your life. If somebody takes anybody from here who is sane, no man, to a psychiatric home, there will be crisis. But if anybody is abnormal, where will you take the person to? And be treated. So for Jesus to say, you have to be born again, it means something had gone wrong. Whatsoever thing that has gone wrong in the life of humanity, in your life, may God correct it today. May the wholeness of God 
The wholeness that is embedded in the original plan of God's creation for man. May that plan, may that wholeness be restored to you in the name of Jesus. And while man was in the garden, man had to fall. He misused the will. The will that God gave to man, man misused it. And at the end, man started lamenting. The earth that's supposed to sustain man. The immortal man that God created. The earth that's supposed to sustain him, sustain his children, sustain Adam and Eve till today. Today, about 7 billion humans, the earth cannot sustain us again. Because something had gone wrong. It wouldn't have been okay for Jesus to die without spilling his blood. The life of every living thing is in the blood. And when, if they had strangled Jesus, strangled Jesus to death without spilling his blood, the death wouldn't have been complete. Because there were many things to be healed. Then the blood of Jesus had to flow so that the blood can touch the earth again that was caused by, man, by, by, by God. God did not cause man. He placed causes upon the ground. The earth that man came from. And when Jesus died, this blood had to drop upon the earth for the healing of the land. Praise the Lord. And the Bible says, by his stripes, you are what? I said you are what? Say by his stripes, I am healed. If you believe it, say amen. fair man lost something god is immortal god never dies the revelation chapter one says revelation one uh, forgetting the scripture i am the first and last the beginning and the end the almighty He had no end. I'm all far and omega. The first and the last. The beginning and the end. The almighty. Man has a beginning, but man has no end. Is that true? Eh? Man has no end. As you are sitting down here now, you will not die. Don't say amen, no? Because we have two categories of persons here. We will not die. Why is it that we will not die? After God created man, God said man is earthly. And I have made him earthly from the earth first. But I want to make him heavenly. If I do not give man a part of myself, man is not going to have my likeness. Even if he has my image bodily form looks like me i have to give him my likeness and the bible says god breathed into the nursery of man and man became what man became a living soul can you destroy god scientists that are here the law states that energy can never be created it can never be destroyed you can't create it you can't destroy it you can store it you can transform it from one form to the other. You can transmit it. You can make use of it, but you can't destroy it. That is the soul of man. God said, Jesus said, do not be afraid of him who can kill the body, but cannot kill your soul. But be afraid of him who can kill your body and cast, not kill, and cast your body into hell. Jesus did not make mistake. You can't kill the soul. Eternal death means eternal separation from God and being in the place of torment forever and ever. So the parts that came from God can never, never die. But when man sinned, God had to tamper with the parts that is earthly. 
that this one that came from the earth must return back to this earth. But there was a plan. After the fall of man, in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, Jesus said, this same woman, serpent, this same woman, you deceive today. There is a seed that will come out of this woman. And that seed, we, you will bruise his seed and he will crush your head. And that is the promise of Jesus Christ. And when Jesus came, he said, I have not come for the righteous, but to call sinners to repentance. Jesus did not come to save angels. He came to save humans. There is a hymn I like so much. Hymns 8 and Mother 452 stanza 5. Let me read it out for you. He said, there is a song for little children. Above the bright blue sky, a song that will not weary. Those sang continually. A song that even angels can never, never sing. Though they know not Christ as Savior, but worship him as king. This is the truth. They don't know him as their Savior. When angels sinned against God, Jesus did not die for them. Maybe because they were not carrying the image and the likeness of God. Why some of us go to any length to make sure even if our children are in okay prison, even when they have killed, we make sure we bring them back because they are carrying our name, they are carrying our DNA, and we will say, my child will not die anyhow. Man was created as the God man, the, the one to exercise dominion on earth. And when man sinned against God, God said, you came from me. There is a part that is earthly. And for me to redeem you, I, listen, there are two parts of man. Um, let's open our Bibles to Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Let me read something to you. 12, 7. Ecclesiastes 12, 7. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, as it was. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was. And the spirit returned unto God who gave it. This is the two parts. The two different materials man is made of. And God said, for me to redeem man and make man the original being I have created man to be, I have to take steps in these two dimensions. Number one, man is my image and my likeness. He is God man. So I have to use God. I have to make God come and redeem man because man came from who? Came from who? Man came from God, the soul came from God. And that soul can never, never be destroyed. And God also told himself that for me to restore man who is earthly, I have to use somebody that is earthly. And God had to send Jesus. And permit me to use the word and squeeze Jesus in the womb of Mary. Anglican says, you did not abhor the virgin's womb. You did not abhor, you did not reject, you did not abominate the virgin's womb. God came and dwell inside of man so that man can dwell inside of God once again. When Jesus says, Abide in me that I may abide in you. I have come so that I can live in you. But you have to give me the permission to come in and make you whole. If something is wrong with your life, if anything at all is wrong with your life, this is the time to go back to your creator. In the evening, we will continue from here. I'm just trying to lay a foundation for evening. Praise the Lord. Became man, the 
that man may become who? May become who? May become God. It's like somebody is not understanding me. Psalm 82. Psalm 82. Verses 5, 6, and 7. They know not, neither will they understand. Listen to me. The problem of humanity is not Satan. The problem of man is not Satan. It's not demons. To God himself, they, are, they have been written off as if they don't even exist. How many times did Jesus even talk about Satan? How many times? Eh? How many times did Jesus mention devil? Even in Matthew chapter 24, where he was telling the disciples about the signs of the end time. I have read my Bible. That chapter, I did not see Satan. Who is the arch enemy of man? Who? Who? Oh, you don't know your enemy. Who? Maybe I for now ask you, as I ask the question, I will say, no, keep up. I go raise prayer points. I go raise prayer points or fall and die. They will go to hear the name of Satan. People will be screaming, Satan. Satan, pack your load and go. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Satan is the arch enemy of man. But as such, when Jesus told them that, to Jesus, Satan was already a finished, finished product. He was a finished business. There was no need killing yourself, flogging a dead lion. What Jesus talked about was first prophets, first teachers, the wickedness of man, demonic activities, even without mentioning demons. Because he said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given unto me as a father has sent me. So I sent you. Go and cast the devils out. He says, they know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. Why are they out of course? Because man does not understand his ability. Man does not, when the head is sick, the whole body will become sick. Even when there was a prophecy to be released, the man who seemed to be carnal in terms of the spirituality that Jesus brought, the high priest had to release a prophecy. And the Bible says he said this because he was a high priest in that year, Caiaphas. He said it's better for one man to die than for a whole nation to perish. A high priest prophesying and he did not even know he was prophesying. That prophecy, there were prophets who would have released that prophecy. But nobody was qualified to release it. That is why even the altar, nobody goes there except the high priest who, even, who is qualified to go there once in a year. And you can't say, my anointing is too high. My anointing is too high. Our vicar is too carnal. My pastor is too carnal. Eh. Respect anointing. Jesus said, even if these Pharisees, scribes and Pharisees, even if they don't do what they tell you, he said, obey them. Because they do what? They are occupying the seat of Moses. They know not, neither will they understand. But, let me just read it. There is no time again. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. I have said, ye. Tell your neighbor, point at your neighbor, ye. Use my language, don't say you. Ye are gods. And all of you are children of the Most High. But ye shall die like and fall like one of these princes. You 
shall die like mortal men. Because you are God man and you decided to humiliate yourself and disobey me, you will die like ordinary man. And when Jesus came, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Anyone that believes in me, he will never die. Though he were dead, yet shall he live. Jesus is alive. He has come to restore that life to us. But before we have it, you have to pass through another womb. The problem of humanity is humanity not having enough knowledge of humanity. I don't think I've confused anybody here. The greatest challenge of humanity is a lack of knowledge of humanity of humanity. If we know who we are, if we know our stand in God, we will stand tall and do exploit. The Bible says, they that knew their God. Shout hallelujah. They shall do exploit too. Before we pray, be standing, be rising. Many people shall lament in heaven. There is no tears in heaven, no. But there are people who will try to cry. But because they will be breaking the rule of crying in heaven and introducing tears into heaven, they will not be able to cry. Do you know why? Some who spend the whole of their lifetime taking drugs will cry when they see the power of God to heal in heaven. Some will cry and weep when they see the authority that God had given to man and they will cry. Look at how I ran and wasted days traveling here and there, running after false prophets, running to Babalawo, running to witches and wizards and doing all kinds of things. And I never knew that God said, ye are gods. And all of you, you are sons of the Most High. Lord, instrument for you. Use me, Lord. Use me, oh Lord. Oh, use me, Lord. God, make me a practical instrument for you. Use me, oh Use me now, Lord. Make me a practical instrument for you. Use me, O oh Lord. Father, use me now, Lord. Make me a practical instrument for you. We hope you were blessed by this message. For more information, visit our website, www.hosannadavid.com. Email us at info at hosannadavid.com. God bless you.